<laughs> okay, for athletics, um, when we're doing uh, our research, we found out that athletics has seven events. But uh, for this case, we are focusing on only two uh, events, uh, which are sprints and distance running. Now, um, it, it requires uh, more effort uh, in order to sustain your own momentum and stamina. So for our uh, aesthetics curriculum, we there will be assessments at the end of instruction so that uh, we are able to assess them when they are able to run uh, whether long distance or sprints. Because for different um, for sprints there are certain uh, criteria to follow, and for distance running there are other, uh, there are other criteria to follow. Um, okay, you can do it via videos and demonstration. Basically, the videos would probably be useful when you want to show them how to. Um, Start. Uh, at the starting point, later uh, my members will mention to you, uh, the starting points are different types of starts. So uh, using videos would be better to show them how to actually start from the starting line. Um, and it's, uh, this is just a rough idea, um, theory 30 minutes and practical 45 minutes. Actually it's similar for all the sports that we uh, cover. Uh, the rules would be um, these are these are actually the sorry yeah the theory 30, 30 minutes and the practical forty five minutes is meant for today no 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 it's meant for normal no, the actual oh, yeah. okay. it's actually for it, uh, actually applies to all of the sports as well okay so that means um, when we teach clients we should factor in thirty minutes for theory yeah okay um, the rules for sprints and distance running are actually the same. Uh, these are actually the rules, and they are very simple rules to follow actually. Uh, for sprints and distance running, you have to be in lane throughout the race. Uh, but I think for distance running, you need not be in lane throughout the race. Uh, disqualification will happen if you have one false start, which means to start before the result blows. Um, or if he defeats another runner by pushing him and uh, he has an unfair advantage. Uh, it's compulsory to wear the, the, the shoes. and. And it's not automatically disqualified from leaving a sign in with no advantage of the game. It means that if there's no, uh, if he doesn't uh, obstruct, obstruct yeah, or if he doesn't start before the whistle blows, then uh, but it's not over the starting line. Right? The running track is recommended. Equipment's very simple, <coughs> just whistle and stopwatch for that timing. Uh, attire, similar for most of the sports that we have, uh, shirts. Um, sleeveless or t-shirt and it should be long enough to be tucked in um, shorts comfortable shorts socks shoes proper running shoes and at least a posted towel as well okay so now I'll pass on to Jana yeah. okay uh, so there are two types of start one is stand up uh, it's for distance and sprint and block which is just uh, sprinting so for starts would be um, standing up. Starts involve three commands uh, on your mark, get set, uh, set and go. So note that go can be start uh, pistol or whistle. I think you're using whistle. Yeah, you're using whistle. Whistle, yeah, we'll do that. <laughs> Just for official yeah, officializing. Yeah. So uh, on your mark uh, command is used when the athlete comes to the starting line to begin the race. Uh, start behind the starting line. Um, relax, power foot in front. Uh, place toe or back foot behind the heel of front foot about 20 to 30 centimeters, roughly a shape. Yeah, you don't need any time. So look up slightly, focusing 2 meters ahead. Uh, for the set command, um, the athlete must become as still as possible, bend front knee slightly, uh, roughly 103 degrees, placing weight on both of them. Let me show you this uh, video later. Hold arm opposite. Um, from front foot flex in front of body, hold other arm back, hand toes slightly down the hip, stand as still as possible. So, you want to start in position. You want to put your strongest leg first. So, if your left leg is stronger than your right leg, you can have your left leg in front of you. So, that's take off. You're going to be pulling with that leg longer than the opposite leg. So, it only makes sense to be pulling longest with your stronger leg. So since we don't actually have starting you know, blocks here, we're just going to go from a three-point stance. It's called a three-point stance because I'm going to have one, two, three points on the ground. Okay? So, 
I'm gonna make sure if I'm running in this direction that my body's gonna be in a straight line in that direction. I don't want my right leg out over here or up behind my leg like this because I'm gonna go off in the wrong direction. I'm gonna go this way. So everything's gonna be nice and aligned. So if I'm standing straight, I would just bring my right leg behind me. Then taking my right hand because my left leg is in front, I'm gonna take my right hand and put that in line with my right foot. So having a nice bend in the left leg, maybe close to 90 degree, you know, a slight bend in the, in the right leg, you know, whatever feels most comfortable. Keep my left arm up above my body. Because I'm going to use that as I come up to drive. So if I have my left arm down, I'm not going to be able to really drive as much as if I have my left arm behind me. So really get that nice long drive. So that bend as I start, that first step you take, you're driving with your left arm down. And you're bringing your right, you're pushing off with that right uh, right leg, and then bringing it through, cycling it through. So slowly it's going to look like that. That's what your first step going to look like. Okay? So here's an example of the start. I'm going to do it slowly, and then another one medium, and then another one fast. So here's a slow. And then the second one's speeding up a little bit. So you can see what it looks like. Almost, it almost looks like I'm jumping out because you're floating out of that spot, out of that spot position. It's a faster version of what I just did. And that's starting. So for uh, Stephen, for stand up, um, the go command is usually created by the sound of the starter pistol uh, or whistle. <coughs> Drive back it forward, you do knee swing, front, front arm, uh, back. Push strongly off ball of power, front foot, swinging back arm, forward, pause, please. Mm -hmm. show me. Yeah, stay low, using arms to drive body forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Align block in direction of start, place starting blocks one foot length from the starting line, place front pedal two foot length from the starting line. Place rear pedal two and one half to three foot lengths from starting line, or one foot length from the front block. Um, to note that the front and back pedals will have to be adjusted depending on the athlete's preference. When you travel to compete, so okay, usually in a school, right, you don't have those blocks or pedals, so usually you use the starting for the just on the stand up. That works as well. Uh, mm. Because in A, P, S, N, you all don't have those blocks and those pedals. So most of the time you'll be using the stand up yeah. position, which is just your The block and the pedals is actually for competition. Okay. So it's just like extra information. Mm. Mm. Do you have a picture of the block? How it looks like? It's just a pedal, you know, in real in yeah, like Yeah, I, I know the pedal. Block, what's, what's the block? Yeah, they call it the block. Oh, they call it the block. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. It's a hurdle. It's all Okay. Actually, I can just show you quickly. Um, oh, I, yeah, I just have to leave it to the spot. Yeah. Block, okay. Yeah. This for competition. Yeah, right, it's there. The model, right? Yeah, the metal. Yeah, the metal. Yeah, the metal. Yeah, the metal. But in school itself, we don't have that. A physical block. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. But normally in the school, you use it. Can you can you put in the the link. YouTube link in, into the yeah, yeah so that you can have this information. The block is only for competition. Just extra information in case you actually take part. I see. I see. So see what's what's in block. So children's guide and competency levels for level one is beginner. Uh, beginner should be able to run for thirty minutes at a steady pace. Three. Uh, three minutes at a steady <laughs> pace. Should be able to run for thirty seconds at a fast pace. Uh, and competency level two is the intermediate, which is middle distance. It is, should be able to run uh, one kilometer. Race. So you can actually uh, put that into the different competency levels according to beginners and middle distance. And long distance and middle and long distance is like the advanced module. Should be able to run like 1.5 km race and should be able to run a 3 km race. 
test the advantage. Note that this does not require timing. So as long as they are able to run to this distance, I think they are fine. And allies and competitors should be able to run beyond 3 km and up to 10 km. Yeah. For allies and com yes. competitors, you will be using the pedal as well. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so only for that, uh, the bridges? Uh, means if they don't give up competition, then they leave. The both of the leading people? Uh, oh, the those are all stand up. Uh, the oh, stand up okay. position. Okay. Yeah. Uh, for ourselves, we need to show the physical thing. If not, they won't be able to transfer the skills to the knowledge. Mm. That's why I asked. But then if you all don't have those blocks in the schools, you just show the video. That's for extra information. In case they actually take part in external competitions. Mm -hmm. And training focus for middle distance is actually pace, the <coughs> balance between volume and intensity, and need a good aerobic pace, speed training and good endurance to show them to be able to pay themselves. We will show you how to do speed training later on during the practical. So we'll show you how to do speed training. Because middle distance is not like sprints, you need to be able to pace yourself. As if you don't chop all so. the way down, you pace yourself. Yeah. Uh, middle distance runners should try and maintain a predetermined pace as established by your coach. Um, like, for example, running 400 meters in 45 seconds every lap during a 1006 meter training. Right? So, actually, you break up. Yeah. You break the 1006 into 400. Yeah, maybe 45 seconds. Then, instructors should set appropriate times for the clients to run set distance at certain time intervals. For example, running 200 meters every 3 minutes. To improve, clients will increase speed or decrease time to shorter the interval. Means as they run, they will have a, uh, like, for example, they run 200, mm, 200 meters every 3 minutes, then you will, like, to improve the speed, they will, like, maybe shorten the timing bit a bit. Mm. So they will know they will slowly improve the timing. Or increase the distance. Okay. Or increase speed or decrease time. Uh, to work on speed, client can do surges, for example, have cones set out at intervals around the track. The client will run a normal strike to first cone and then search to increase speed. To mix cone and keep changing from normal to search between cone. This is like speed training, but speed training is um, you do not use cones, you just use whistle. So, uh, for example, um, one minute of slow jog and then 30 seconds of fast jog.